Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, is major depressive disorder overdiagnosed or underdiagnosed? So this is an interesting question that came from a subscriber. And one of the confusing elements around overdiagnosis is really the definition. The definition of overdiagnosis in mental health is really different than we see in medicine. The definition for overdiagnosis originated in medicine, and now we use it in mental health, but they really don't mean the same thing. An overdiagnosis in medicine is actually a correct diagnosis that occurs in an individual who would never develop symptoms or die from the disorder. So really, in the medical world, overdiagnosis has more to do with overtreatment. In mental health, the way that we use overdiagnosis is usually to mean an unacceptably high false positive rate. So using major depressive disorder as an example, this would be where an individual does not have major depressive disorder, but they are assessed, and the assessment shows that they do have the disorder. So in actuality, they don't, but the assessment says they do. That's a false positive. An overdiagnosis as an overarching concept would occur when that false positive rate becomes unacceptably high. And of course, there are a lot of factors that would go into determining what is and what is not unacceptably high in terms of a false positive rate. So underdiagnosis in mental health would be an unacceptably high false negative rate. So that would be when somebody has major depressive disorder and they come in to get assessed, and the assessment shows that they do not have it. It's a false negative. They really do have it, but the appraisal says they don't have it. Now, with major depressive disorder, there was an article published in 2013 that talked about overdiagnosis with this disorder. Now, this was a large sample size involved in this study. Really, these were participants who had been diagnosed with major depressive disorder and the researchers were looking at the notes from those interviews. So these individuals weren't reassessed, but rather the information from their assessment was reviewed. Only about 38% of the individuals who were diagnosed with major depressive disorder were found to meet the full criteria. Now, this was again a large sample, over 5,000 participants. So that's a lot of false positives over 60% of those individuals would represent a false positive. Now, of course, a number of those individuals did have some sort of depressive disorder. They just didn't meet the full criteria for major depressive disorder. So we can't say that if someone is diagnosed with major depressive disorder when they don't have it, when there's a false positive, that that automatically means they shouldn't get treatment. Usually, if they are diagnosed with major depressive disorder, they are probably indicating something was amiss in terms of sadness or depression. There was something going on. Some sort of symptom set that merits treatment, but not necessarily meets the criteria for major depressive disorder. Now, that article also talked about underdiagnosis as a problem with major depressive disorder. And this brings me back to the original question. Is major depressive disorder overdiagnosed or underdiagnosed? Well, actually, it's both. Overdiagnosing and underdiagnosing are not mutually exclusive. You can have a high false positive rate with a particular mental health disorder, and with that same disorder, have a high false negative rate. So to demonstrate, I can use a quick example. Let's say that there are 100 people sampled from the population, and we happen to know that 10 of those people do meet the full criteria for major depressive disorder and 90 do not. So we know that in advance. An assessment is performed with all 100 participants and 30 participants are shown to have major depressive disorder. That's what the assessment says. Now, of course, that's overdiagnosis. However, what if of those 30 participants that were found to have major depressive disorder, only two were from the sample of 10 that actually had major depressive disorder? So there we'd have underdiagnosis because of the 10 individuals who actually had the disorder, only two were identified. The other 28 
that were found to have the disorder were from the group of 90 that did not have major depressive disorder. So you can see the false positive rate and the false negative rate can both be unacceptably high in a given population or a sample. So when we look at overdiagnosis or underdiagnosis with major depressive disorder or any mental health disorder, it's pretty clear that at first glance, underdiagnosis is uniformly negative. That means that somebody has the disorder and the assessment shows that they don't. So you have somebody with the disorder who's not getting treated. I've heard the argument made that overdiagnosis in mental health isn't as serious because counseling and other talk therapies carry very little risk. Even if we accept that mental health counseling carries little risk, and generally I think evidence does support this, there is a waste of resources. If we're treating individuals who don't have a disorder when we think they do, that's inefficient. Another part though specifically with major depressive disorder is that a lot of individuals who are diagnosed with disorder receive medications. And of course medications can have side effects sometimes severe. So underdiagnosing is a problem, but overdiagnosing is a problem too. Both false negatives and false positives can be destructive. So with major depressive disorder, why do we have this problem of overdiagnosis and underdiagnosis? Well, there are a lot of factors that contribute to the problem. A lack of understanding of the diagnostic criteria of psychopathology, specifically with major depressive disorder, seems to be part of the problem. Another part of the problem is, in general, assessments aren't always as thorough as they could be. And if we look at the amount of time that somebody could be in mental health treatment, it seems important to spend the time we need in assessment. Somebody could spend just an hour being assessed and then spend hundreds of hours in treatment over several years. So it's important that the assessment be done correctly. Ideally, with major depressive disorder or any mental health disorder, the diagnosis should be made by someone who's an expert in mental health and specifically has knowledge of appraisal and psychopathology. Unfortunately, in mental health treatment, this doesn't always happen. Now, when we talk about overdiagnosis and underdiagnosis, it's important here to point out that this is a population level phenomenon. An individual can't be overdiagnosed or underdiagnosed if we're using the definition of an unacceptably high false positive rate or unacceptably high false negative rate. If an individual is diagnosed with a disorder they don't have, that is a false positive. So that is one instance of a false positive. If they are not diagnosed and they do have this disorder, that's one instance of a false negative. One instance doesn't represent overdiagnosis or underdiagnosis. Rather, as I mentioned, that has to be a population level phenomenon. We see overdiagnosis and underdiagnosis with a mental health disorder across the population. I hope you found this description of overdiagnosis and underdiagnosis with major depressive disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.